Hello and welcome to Money Life. This is Sucheta Dilal and today I'm going to talk about something different. We are not blaming anyone this time. We are talking about what we ourselves need to do. So what is it that investors don't know that they don't know? That's my topic today. We all know that in the last two years, people have lost enormous amounts of money to brokerage firms that have defaulted and a variety of frauds. These fraudsters can come in the form of bank relationship managers, insurance agents that missell. They don't have to be pure fraudsters who say, hey, look, I'm trying to chip you. They can be from very legitimate organizations which sell you a really bad deal. And you have to be on your toes all the time. Now, we usually blame the regulator. We say they're sloppy, they didn't act in time, they should have been more careful, protected our interests. But what about us? Do we do enough? I've been talking about Anugrah for the last two weeks and we know that this brokerage firm and its associates collected a thousand crores from people. How did it do it? By offering offering incredible returns. And so people threw caution to the wind, forgot about sane advice and went and gave their money to Anugrah. They get angry when you point this out to them, but that's the truth. In fact, many CAs will tell you, there are many CAs who invested in Anugraha, while many CAs will tell you that when they told their clients that this is not going to work, some were sensible enough to keep away, but others didn't, right? So I'm not going to give you my wisdom, I'm going to give you distilled wisdom that's come down the ages about what people need to do, what they should know, and what they don't look at. So let me start with this fantastic quote from John Rothschild in his book, A Fool and His Money. It is going on forever, nothing changes from the time he said it. So what did he say? People who spend a week choosing a furniture refinisher will sign up with the first financial planner who calls. People who circle junkyards for matching hubcaps will buy mutual funds without reading the prospectus. And people who check the expiry date on their cottage cheese would not think of investigating the background of their broker. This is in the American context. In the Indian context, look at what you do when you go to a mall. Don't you look, choose, look at expiry dates, make comparisons. Why is it that we don't do this when it comes to our money? So let me talk about a few red flags that are very evident to people who are careful and which ought to be a warning to you. The first, believe it or not, is assured returns. Now, when someone assures you a return and capital guarantee, instead of it being something that you can celebrate, in the market, it's a red flag. Why? More than 25 years ago, there was this investor activist still around doing great work called Virendra Jain of Midas Touch Investors Association who dragged Can Bank a Mutual Fund and its scheme Can Start to court and he pointed out that they had offered an assured return and when the Harshad Mehta scam happened, they said we will not be able to pay that money. Now, Can Bank Mutual Fund was not alone. There were scores of them. Insurance companies and public sector banks have floated similar schemes. So he said, I don't care. This is a subsidiary of Canada Bank, which is big, powerful, loaded, has lots of money. The parent bank should pay because they should be responsible for what the subsidiary did. The court agreed with him and believe it or not, every public sector bank and public sector insurance company had floated similar short return schemes through their subsidiaries and all of them paid up. SEBI had already been set up, got wise really quickly and assured returns has been banned or frowned upon and actually categorically uh, banned in even in terms of advertisements for more than 25 years. So don't say you don't know and you are surprised. In fact, if you go to the National Stock Exchange website, there is a code of advertisements which clearly says that even an advertisement can't assure you a return. Now, go back and look at what made you invest in Anugraha and not just Anugraha, dozen of them. What did they promise you? An assured return. Look at the chart. 100% capital protection, 12% assured return. As against it, they showed you a chart, which we are showing you here, which says in 2014-15, the return was as high as 40%, then it was 27%. In any case, they were paying you far more than assured. 
So what did you do? You looked at the chart, you looked at the slide presentation that was emailed to you, that was passed on from one friend to another and did not bother. They also told you they are paying you every month, you asked around. This is what people do in a Ponzi scheme, not in the market. So you asked around, they said yes, we get more than 12%, banks are stupid, they don't give you enough on your term loans, so go and put your money there. right? Now, did you notice? that that PowerPoint presentation did not even have the name or the logo of Anugra. Did you notice that it did not even come from the official brokerage account? It came from a Gmail account. But no, everybody is waking up now and realizing that they have been caught. So let me look at a few questions in the context of Anugra that people have been asking us after this has happened. So one question was, that NSC has found that the depository advisory scheme that was being run by them was illegal. So people are outraged and they say, how do you say it was illegal? Well, quite simple. Look at what SEBI permits. Okay, Under SEBI rules, you can manage people's money if you are a mutual fund, a venture capital fund, a portfolio management service, an alternate investment fund. You can be a mutual fund investment advisor or you can be a distributor. In these two categories, you cannot collect money. Each of these have extremely stringent requirements. What kind of people you can employ? What is the capital adequacy? What is the reporting? It is tough and onerous. So is there any depository advisory scheme that fits into any of these? No. Did you check? No. So then people say, but you know, he collected a power of attorney. We found, you, we signed 30 pages. What was that about? That, my friends, was opening a brokerage account pure and simple and opening a depository account. Yes, it requires nearly 30 signatures. You did that. He was a registered broker on the NSC. He was supposed to put through transactions for you. For the convenience of those transactions, he took a power of attorney so that you don't have to be bothered about sending those DIS slips all the time. So you gave that power of attorney. That was for you to make decisions, tell him what to trade, not to give a lump of money and tell him do what you want to as long as you are paying me this fat assured return every month. You did not check that. Now, Teji Mandi Analytics, which actually collected 800 crore as part of this group, was even worse. It did not even have the fig leaf of a brokerage license. In fact, it got you to do all your signatures through Anugraha. Did you ask why? Did you bother to go and check from SEBI's website whether Teji Mandi Analytics, which is running a derivatives advisory service, was legitimate? No, it is not difficult. Now, let's come to another bit of wisdom. It's called the Turkey problem. Why is it called the Turkey problem? This is something that's come up, that has been mentioned by Nissan Nicholas Talib, the best-selling author of The Black Swan. Everybody quotes this best-selling book, but they forget a very brilliant piece of advice. Here's what he said. He said, consider a turkey that is fed every day. Farmer buys a turkey before Christmas, he's feeding it every day, fattening it. Every single feeding will firm up the bird's belief that in general, his life is, in general, the rule in life is to be fed every day by friendly members of the human race. This goes on for months and the turkey feels better, takes it for granted. Then, one day before Thanksgiving, the farmer comes and wrings its neck. Things can deteriorate and deteriorate really quickly. It's exactly what happened to Anugra. 40%, then a little down, and then one fine day, it's just collapsed. Your money is gone. The turkey issue, don't be a turkey. But, I'm sorry, I have a lot of sympathy for people who have lost money. They don't deserve to be cheated. But all I'm saying is, in future at least be a little cautious don't make these mistakes don't be a turkey now like i said look at anugra's returns 40 percent 14 15 29.75 percent 15 16 21 percent 16 17 where do you get this kind of money and if it was so easy i would have put my money there everybody would have put their money there banks would be bankrupt because nobody wants to earn a six and seven percent return in a term deposit you keep it there because it's safe. And even there, people like us and our sister entity, Money Life Foundation, keep saying, be careful about cooperative banks. 
Now the next question, but we paid taxes. How can it be legal when we've been paying taxes? So one victim tells me, for every transaction on the NSC, we paid service tax, securities transaction tax, stamp duty and SEBI fees. The government collected so much of money from us through Anugraha and TMA. How can it be illegal? You have to understand the doctrine of taxation. You may not like this, but believe it or not, any illegality tainted with earning has absolutely no bearing on taxability. The income tax department just doesn't care if the money is earned illegally or by resorting to unlawful means, you will pay taxes. So forget about the income tax that you paid. doesn't matter how illegal it was or what you did. You earned, you pay tax. That's a government rule. There's a lot of legal precedent. I've attached some clips in my uh, column in Money Life. Take a look at it. As for the rest, STT, stamp duty, service tax, these were legitimately paid by Anugrah on transactions that they did in your name or on your behalf. Because remember, the only legitimate part was Anugraha as a stockbroker trading on the NSC. So the rest of it was legitimate. The service that he ran was still illegitimate. Now let's come to a third point, which is extra income that was a lure on your investments. So what did Anugraha say? You can give them cash, in which case you get the highest return. You can give them shares, in which case they look at what NSC accepts as margin, takes a haircut, which means they consider only 50% of it. You sign it off to them by giving a power of attorney. They go and pledge those shares and then they use that as margin to trade on your behalf. So the returns are much lower. But basically they're telling you when you hold core holdings, that's a dead investment. If you give it to us, we will make sure that it earns a lot of money for you. You fell for it. So you endangered your core earnings. The third thing they said is even if your mutual funds, that's fine. Give them to us. We will tell you how to invest it better and we will give you a higher return. So some people give them mutual funds. If you are lucky, those shares are still lying with CDSL after NSE has closed down its business. Some people have been able to get it back. Was it a problem? Yes. In fact, it was sheer greed because when you have a core holding, let it be. You have to earn from the interest that you get, maybe on mutual funds, the dividends and market appreciation. Don't try and pledge it to a broker. Lots of people have lost money with every broker offering assured returns by pledging their core holdings. And that means you are losing twice over, right? The final question, which is, are expectations of trust and integrity too much to ask? No, they're not. But how many people do you trust? Look around you. Even when you go to a doctor, you want a second opinion. You want a lawyer, you take four opinions and you still crib. When you're buying something, you're not sure, you're looking at multiple options. Why is it that in the market you're so trusting just because someone offers higher returns? We are not singling out Anugraha. In fact, there are a dozen brokerage firms even today who are running these kind of dubious schemes. They fly below SEBI's radar and yes, unfortunately, they get caught only when they go bust. And believe it or not, trust is not something, at least in markets, you're careful. We tell you through Money Life Foundation, do not even trust your relationship manager. He's not there for you. He's there for the high return that the bank earns. When it comes to your money, please do not trust somebody. We've seen people, the biggest names in the banking industry decimate people's wealth in the guise of managing it and collecting fees for it selling you insurance that you don't need or selling you insurance that has got low returns. I mean, look at the number of people who are writing to us about Jeevan Saral and how after 10 years, they're discovering that they're getting not even their principal back. So when it comes to markets, yes, we want to trust people, but don't trust them with your money. There's only one principle that operates in the market, which is caveat enter or buyer beware. This has to be your guiding principle. You have to do your due diligence and keep blind trust, maybe for your family or your parents. Don't expect integrity. Hard work is required. Thank you.